Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Tonight we begin a new uh, section, a new pathway of looking at the Holy Qur'an and its miraculous nature. One of the things that people often use to refer to this is scientific miracles. But the problem with that is, is that using science as like a gauge for what is right or wrong or truth or falsehood is a problematic narrative. Why? So science, as we know it, has many great benefits. We're all benefiting every moment from the blessings of human advancement in science. That being said, the concept of Western European science is directly opposed to God. It's fundamentally rooted in atheism. Why? Because the church in Europe used to be the rulers. And they used to rule everybody. And when anybody started to talk about formulating some equations or some hypotheses, they were called heretics, burnt at the stake, killed. There's a very good book you should read called The House of Wisdom. It's a book that a non-Muslim historian of the Middle East wrote. And it's the um, memoirs of a man named Adelard of Bath. Bath is ancient England. And in the 12th century, he was hiding and secretly writing down his scientific things because he knew if he did that in public, it would mean his life under the Christian hegemony. So he had heard about these scientific people in the Arab lands. And he heard that they have freedom of science and the idea of being involved in contributing in science is highly encouraged and you can be Christian or Jew or even atheist in their lands and do that. And so he traveled to Spain and then he traveled to Cyprus and then he traveled to Baghdad. And his, it's all his own ancient English memoirs from 900 years ago about how he was able to begin his own enlightenment through learning Arabic and talking to Arab scholars of science. So when the Muslim world started to fall down in the 15th century, the European people took a lot of that stuff that we were doing in Spain and in the Balkan states and uh, modern day Albania and Serbia and those areas, um, uh, Bosnia and so forth, they were scientists over there. And they were, and even in the Russian area, the Kazakhstan's, you know, like, uh, what is it, Uzbekistan, you know, Imam Bukhari, there were many great scholars there. So when they built the Renaissance, their whole thing was, we want to define our society without God. Some of them, most of them believed in God, but they said it should be a principle that the church has no business in our science. So that's how science started in the West, is against religion. You have to understand this. And they couldn't quote us directly because then it looks like they're taking from religion again. So they took all the good scientific ideas that we had and they built upon that. Even to now, you will see remnants of it. So for example, Avicenna and Averroes. This is Ibn Sina and Ibn Rushd. Okay? And these are amazing scholars in the scientific fields of medicine and philosophy um, and astronomy. Um, so back to our point here. You can't, the, the atheism wants you to see science as like the God, really. Like it, it is the truth. When really what it is, is the current going theories and formulas of human mind to understand the natural world, right? That's all it is. And they change theories all the time, right? Isn't it true? They've had many, many theories that stood for the longest time amongst all of the Western scientists, and then they changed them, right? And we'll get into some of those because how the Quran was always right, and then whenever scientists in the West were saying, this is where we find the problem. Oh, that's not right, because we said, oh no, maybe we're wrong. And then later they found out, oh, actually the Qur'an was right. As we saw with the story of Joseph and others when we talk about historical things. So the ayah in the end of, I believe, Surah Fussilat, سَنُورِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآثَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ We will show them our signs in themselves, in the world right around them, and in the horizons around them, we will show them our signs until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. So we here is referring to God in the royal we, meaning this is a very profound thing that I will do to change the hearts and minds of people to recognize my glory and what I am to them. 
And so what he's saying is, you will come to know about things that will then be proven to be signs of God's truth, which make the Qur'an the truth, right? So we'll start tonight with the very basic, simple idea of the Big Bang. Big Bang is uh, the going theory on the existence of the universe. Where did it come from, right? So Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein said E equals MC squared, time, matter, energy, all those are relative. Meaning stuff started at some point, okay, and there has time, right, and it has energy because that's why it's still there, right, otherwise it would wither away. And so Albert Einstein's theory was built on by people like, um, uh, you know, what's the guy that recently passed away, um, Stephen Hawking and others, and they came up with 1950s, 1960s, the idea because... Uh, they were seeing that there's an expansion going on. So I'm going to read to you from howscienceworks.com, okay? That way you can see, like, what I'm saying is not like me reading into the Qur'an, because many people do with this whole scientific miracle. Some people went into outer orbit trying to interpret things that don't, like, it's not really what you're saying it is. You're going overboard trying to make something there that's not, to try to make science the truth, right? But the Qur'an is the truth, and when the Qur'an confirms science, it will say then that's what it is, Right? And so it says, simply put, the universe as we know it started with an infinitely hot and dense single point, and then that inflated and stretched at unimaginable speeds, and then at a more measurable rate over the next 13.7 billion years. And it is still expanding in the cosmos that we know today. Okay? That's what it says. The ayah in Surah Al-Anbiya, it says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَ رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ Literally what it means, without any reading into it, anything different, do the disbelievers not realize that in the beginning, everything you see in the heavens and the earth was originally one stitched entity. So رَتْقًا it's like something that's very well molded and stitched together. That's the meaning of ratq. فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا Then we ripped it apart, right? And then he says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ Then we caused all living things to come out of the water. Which sounds like what? What theory is that? Evolution. Evolution, you see? So, now if you look at the end of how science works, their main basis for this, they're saying, in this 13.7 uh, billion years, the universe is still expanding. And so like they're looking at how it's expanding, well it must have come from one place. You see, right? So the Surah Al-Dhariyat, وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا بِأَيْدِيُ وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ And the sky, we built it with great power, and we are expanding it. Right? <laughs> so like that's literally there in the Qur'an. The word aid is like strong power. What would you say would be the power of how the sky is the way it is, the way we know it? I would say that's called gravity. Because if you don't have gravity, it would just be particles floating randomly without any solid, defined barriers in how things work, you see? So that's right there. Now here's another interesting thing. It was Hawking and others believe him who came up with the theory of the big crunch, okay? What is the big crunch? Well, it's the natural logic, and they have all of their super scientific equations to kind of explain how that's going to happen and how it's starting to happen because it keeps getting slower in the expansion. So this thing is going to slow down to a certain point, and then gravity breaks down, and it comes back to one dense point. And so at the end, here's the interesting thing. The, the first eye about the, what looks to be like the Big Bang, it's at the beginning of Surah Al-Anbiya. At the end of Surah Al-Anbiya, يَوْمَ نَطْوِ السَّمَاءَ كَطَيِّ السِّجِلِّ لِلْكُتُبِ كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُ so On the day of judgment, we will take the entire universe like scrolls that have been widened out like that, and we will roll them back like that. As we created the first time, we can create again. Which then some people have posited that there's this infinite expand and crunch like this, and that's what it is. And Allah says, كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُ As we created in the first time, we can recreate again. And then it even indicates that idea. So this is just one. So inshallah, for the next few nights, we'll cover about 10, 12 things that are unmistakably, obviously, the statement of the one who created the universe, that nobody had any idea about any of these things until the last 100 years. And the Prophet spoke it 1,400 years ago. So may Allah guide us to the, the beauty of the Qur'an and 
uh, encourage us in his miracle.